Bow definitely appeals to just about everything in me. Hey, happy Monday. Happy Monday. We survived. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did it go? <clears throat> you know, it was uh, unique, just like every Monday, I feel like. So I'm, uh, I'm glad it's over. Unique is a good way to put it. It's a, uh, it was a different Monday for me. I had no, no work today. No, uh, no students. So just getting stuff done around the house, but still a Monday. Yeah. They, they have a unique way of being that way. They do. They really do. That's why a lot of songs have been written about them. <laughs> yeah. There's not a lot of songs about Tuesdays, you know, I mean, Leonard Skinner's got one, but besides that, it's like, well, oh, it's Tuesday. It's not Monday. Yeah, the one that I like the most, though, Tuesday Afternoon by Moody Blues. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. I think that's my dad's favorite song off that album, actually. Most people, I think they would choose Nights in White Satin, but my dad is very much a Tuesday Afternoon kind of guy. Yeah, I'm always going to choose the deep cuts over the hits. Like, mm -hmm. I, I never need to hear Nights in White Satin that ever again. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't need to hear Stairway to Heaven ever again. Yep. I don't need to hear Enter Sandman ever again. You know, there's just some songs, you know, I, I don't really need to hear Iron Man ever again. True, true. I was at a uh, a little, like, School of Rock performance recently. We have a pretty, mm -hmm. uh, pretty lively and flourishing young music scene here in Boston, which is great. But... Uh, or here and where I live. I probably shouldn't say where I live. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> there was a band of kids, all third and fourth grade or somewhere around there. And they did Iron Man, which I thought was pretty cool considering their age. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's a little different when it's kids at a, like a school of rock thing versus yeah. A band that I've heard or listening to the Black Sabbath, you know, original. Yes, like I, I, exactly. I, I just don't need to hear it. I, I, I've heard it. I've heard a million versions of it. Yep. And if you're not a kid, like, showing your, your chops, like, I, I'm just not interested. Yeah. Sweet Home Alabama, I don't care to ever hear again. And people get mad yeah. at me. That's a skip over right away for me. <laughs> and um, Hotel California. Mm -mm. I mean, I don't care to hear the Eagles in general. No, on me neither. And yeah, like, but if it's Hotel California, uh, I'm I'm running far away from that room. Yeah, I was at this little secondhand, very curated to uh, people who like things from the '70s, '80s, and '90s shop recently. And I and I there was a vinyl record with the Eagles. And someone said, oh, oh, did did you see they have eagles on vinyl? And I just said, this might end our friendship, but I don't like the eagles. And they said, oh, neither do I. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a close friend that loves the eagles and she and I constantly debate over it. And I don't see much of a debate, but. <laughs> well, I don't think there's anything wrong with them. I think they did some amazing work for what they, it's just, it's not my jam. It's just not my jam. No, it's way too. It it's just not it. It's just not it. Give me, give me some Poco, like early Poco. I'm into that. Mm -hmm. But Eagles, I don't need to hear that. At yeah, all. doesn't appeal to this child right here. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thou does. Thou definitely appeals to just about everything in me. Um. When I think of Thou, I think of just about as close to perfection as a band can get. That's that's high praise right there. Well, I mean, like when I think of of bands that I respect from top to bottom, I mean, there what's not to love about Thou? Um, with them as musicians and writers and songwriters to as people, you know, they're they're great. They're you know? really, yeah, they're really, um, they're really musicians, musicians, which is something that I always am drawn to. If as a musician, if I'm listening to it and I'm 
wowed by it. And I want to learn how they did that and where that came from. That impresses me. But I think, I think I obviously, you know, the sound, I love the sound, but lyrically, I just, I really enjoy what they do. I think it's, it's all poetry. I think from start to finish, it's poetry, you know, like not just the, the lyrics, but I mean, the music is poetic. You know, the riffs are poetic. The drums are poetic. Mm -hmm. The, the cover art is, is intentional and makes you think and pushes your eyes beyond the horizon. You know, I agree with that cover art, especially this last one their latest album umbilical it is not what you would expect you wouldn't expect to see this very sweet black and white picture yeah. you know uh it but it's even though it's it's sweet kind of a quaint picture i guess you might say there's still there's a little bit of sadness to it with the the downward facing uh gaze of the the boy holding the plant it's it's unique well, so I wanted to get your thoughts on this because I was thinking a lot about the cover. And so it kind of tied into something that I've been thinking about, about umbilical as a whole, okay? Which is, this is kind of like rebirth in the ashes mm -hmm. to me, is, is what this album feels like. And on the cover, you know, the, the pillar or the building the kid is standing against, you know, it looks like it's crumbling. Mm -hmm. It looks like it could be a, a via somewhere, a villa somewhere. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. But, but it looks ancient and like it, it's falling apart, but it also looks very modern because of the, the sharp lines. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the kid's staring downwards, but holding, you know, these, I believe those are lilies. Um, lilies or tulips, I can't remember, but they're wilt, yeah. right? Yeah, they they they're blooming, but not for much longer. Yeah, lilies, I I see it here. Yeah, like a like an Easter lily, almost or a stargazer. Yeah, they look yeah. like they're, they're almost done. Exactly, and and I think Thou really is. I mean, they've been railing against society for for like what twenty years now close to it at least mm -hmm. um and which i love about them you know like keep it up please do um but i feel like they're with this this cover like I, when i'm looking at it right now i see like the the beauty in failure and the beauty in rebirth and and i think that to a certain extent ties into this album sonically you know, like, I I don't think Thou has had like a, you know, a failure. I mean, I don't know that in terms of what a lot of people consider a success that they've ever had right. a success. 
you right. know, they're not, <laughs> they're not like a, a, a billboard charting band. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're not going to find them on tour with Bruno Mars. Um, uh. <laughs> yeah, I know. That'd be a great bill. I'd love that. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I'd stick around for Bruno Mars, mm-hmm. not a doubt. <laughs> But, you know, like that was, it has been railing against society and the ills and the harms and all the problems that we have. And this album, I feel like, is saying it's time for a kind of rebirth. Well, and I think along with that, the the prior albums are, are very focused more on society. And this one is more focused on interpersonal relationships. I think so. Yeah, I think you know when you look at the 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 names of the songs, and you it's it's the dynamics between family and friends, and then the greater circle outside of that. This is a very yeah. intimately focused album. Well, and it's 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 intimate, and in especially the fact that it's really fucking claustrophobic. <laughs> Like, I feel like this album puts its hands around your neck and is just strangling you and telling you to wake the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you know, whether it, whether it's the, the return to just waves of feedback that start, you know, a lot of these songs and, and punctuate a lot of the riffs, honestly. Right. To, to just, I mean, some of the screams on this album, I think, are maybe the best that, that Brian has, has done with that. I, I think so. They are swarming hives of wasps screams. Yeah. And I, I love uncomfortable. Yeah, that drone where it just makes you kind of tense your shoulders because you need to, you know, there's a, a buzz to it that for a person with a brain like mine is very soothing but it also creates a little bit of that tension like okay i gotta look around what's behind me yeah it's like if you were walking down the street listening to this album like in your your earbuds or whatever you'd be like you know this this is great for a walk like i'm absorbed you know like it's making the time go by a little faster like things like that but i also feel this kind of like itch at the back of my neck like i'm being watched or something yeah, exactly. There's that ever present something a couple steps behind. Yeah. And and normally I would say with Thou that that's like the ills of society, you know, intruding on you. And maybe that's the same way with this album. I'm I you know, I, I don't I don't like to try to put meaning necessarily to someone else's lyrics because like I I don't know what, what the fuck they had in mind with this. Like, I'm, I'm not going to try and put myself in their shoes. But like you said, this album feels a lot more personal. It it does. And I think, you know, I know that they've said thematically they, they didn't choose a theme for this album, which they typically do yeah. have a running yeah. theme. But I think the theme chose itself. And just lo- looking at just i mean the name of it umbilical which is you know um, um, the umbilical is so interesting to use that word because mm-hmm. an umbilical cord is something that ties uh, a mother and a child together for a specific purpose and for a specific amount of time and, yeah, sorry, that, and that's the key there it's the, the 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 finite nature of the umbilical tie and then you throw it away you know it's it's something that you you have the child, medical trash yeah you get rid of it or traditionally you know you would bury it or burn it but it's now useless it doesn't have a place anymore it has to be broken and and discarded which is i mean you could read all kinds of things into that yeah <laughs> yeah like is this album saying like this, this album is supposed to be contemporaneous you know right like is it is it of today and we as listeners today who appreciate thou are going to appreciate it now more than we ever will you know and will will listeners down down the line years from now like will they get it on the same level that we get it i don't know um, I, I kind of feel like it's an album that um, you know, at the risk of 
saying something like this again and again and again lately, but it's an album that I don't think would be here if not for what we've all been through collectively in the last going yeah. on five years, you know, with the pandemic there. So often I am recognizing more and more the product artistically of us having lived through that time and we're yeah. still living through it. We're not, we're not recovered. And so many things have become more a part of our daily vocabulary and our, our daily conversations, uh, particularly around mental health and relationships. We were all sort of yes. forced. Actually, we were very much forced to face these things and learn about them. And people that I knew prior to that, who, you know, they didn't think about things like mental illness. They didn't think about things like relationship dynamics. They'd, these things weren't on their radar and we were all forced in small spaces together. And we, we had to, you know, yeah. things like awareness of what <clears throat> different mental illnesses are and just, just the whole understanding and acceptance of things like depression and anxiety being real problems, not just something that, well, if you, exercised more or prayed more, or, you know, you'd be fine. These are real yeah, chemical exactly. things that people deal with that need to be addressed from all sides. And so I think collectively we're much more aware of these things and more comfortable in most circles, more comfortable talking about them. <clears throat> yeah. Like we're, we're all to, to, to quote a, a song title, you know, we're all our own emotional terrorist, mm -hmm. but we're also all going through our own lonely vigil. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well done there. Yes. <laughs> emotional terror um, is a great track. Great track on this album. It's one of my absolute favorite Thou songs. It, it's probably my second favorite on this album. Um... You know, it, it, it's interesting. This album is so start to finish, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, I don't, I think there are a couple of songs that you can pull out from this album and you can say, oh, wow, this is a great song. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, like Emotional Terrace is one. House of Ideas is one. The Promise is one. Well, These the are problem, all. Yeah, not to, sorry to interrupt, but The Promise, I think, is the most accessible on this whole album. It's, it's maybe the most accessible Thou song I was gonna outside of their work with Emma Ruth Rundle. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I was going to ask you because I feel like you you've listened to Thou a lot longer than I have, and yeah. but I but I feel the same. You know, because I've gone through all of their music, and I feel like the promise is the how do you say it the 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 proof of concept. Like if I was going to introduce somebody and wanted to give them the most accessible taste of thou, it would be The Promise. But uh, but see, what's interesting about The Promise, uh, especially, is that while it's accessible, you know, it's a shorter song, you know, it's not like a 12-minute a epic. It's straightforward. Yeah. Um, it's got a bit of a hopeful kind of tone to it. Like, I think they even said in a podcast or an interview I, I read recently, they were like, yeah, it's our only hopeful song. <laughs> well, it's got um, the down step riff. It's more traditionally rock. Yeah, but it's still that. It like, is. Like, you listen to it and it's you say one. only one band and one band only yeah. can make this, this song, and it's that. Yeah, it's not watered down in the least. No, there's, it's just, it, it's far from being watered down. Like it, I mean, it's still aggressive and, and unpleasant. Yeah. Ultimately. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it's like straying towards like a major key scale, you know? Yes. Yeah. Like it's not quite there, but, but you can hear like little hints of it. The da -na 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 yeah. You know, you're like, you're like, okay, I, Hmm. I, I've heard that that progression in pop songs. Like, this is a rock um, song. Yeah. Yeah, it's not just like nihilistic, you know, sludge. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's something a lot more than that. And I, I don't I don't quite know how to put it into words what the fuck it is. 
<laughs> um, is I don't think thou can create like a pop song or a you know something you can snap your fingers to. Right. Exactly. This isn't a dance music. No, you're not. You're not gonna. You're not gonna go to a club and hear a remix featuring thou or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but they created something that I think really. The Promise is the best example of this with this album, but I think this album as a whole is really interesting because the songs are shorter, you know, um, and they're simultaneously more accessible and more brutal. Right, right. I feel I get what you're saying. I think that's because it feels like everything clicks a little tighter. It's, it's as if everything they did before they were figuring out how they worked together. Nothing is yeah, bad. And like living in, in working together. You right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And putting it all together and there's just beginning to end each, like, for example, um, uh, which one is it? Oh, narcissist prayer. Yeah. First of all, what a name for, a song you know but yeah, that i'm really jealous of, of <laughs> all the names of this on this album yeah. you know i'm like come on man Sa save a couple titles for the rest of us exactly i mean that's just that's that's a, a very intense thing to name a song and it makes you uncomfortable which is what they're good at but that song has it has a musical around which is one of my favorite things where you know the progression is very circular uh, <clears throat> but the there's a guitar squeal in it was as they're approaching the end of the song you might know what i'm talking about that yeah. is just like the rest of the song is very it is very sludgy it is very uh, everything's kind of tamped down except the screams but then all of a sudden that guitar squeal comes up and it's like you, it wakes it wakes you up as a listener and it's a it's a very um classic heavy metal guitar squeal that you don't expect. And all of a sudden there it is. Yeah. I mean, these, these people are, are, I, I think they're very well aware of their musical lineage and history. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't think they're trying to be anyone because I mean, at this point they're, they're thou. They are yeah. thou. They, they've created oh. their own <laughs> world. Um, <clears throat> that's very immersive. Um, but I think they have certain callbacks that are very appealing to a wide variety of heavy listeners. Yeah, I think that makes sense. They, they can draw a lot of people in that way. It is funny because they've been around a while, like 20 years or so. And, uh, you never know because they're not mainstream necessarily, but they're also not no. terribly fringe anymore. But, uh, you know, I walked into a, a coffee shop recently and there was a young lady there that's half my age. And she asked me what I was up to. And I was telling her, you know, I was, you know, getting ready to review that thou. And she said, oh, my gosh, the new album. So she already knew what I was talking about. And yeah. she's like early 20s. And and she said right right away, like, <laughs> okay, so how dare they write an album that so clearly encompasses what I've been through in the last few years? Like, how dare they know my life? And I thought that was we were laughing about it, but I thought, yeah, it's it's very, this is just so on the the pulse right now, you know. And again, it's all poetry, and it could mean anything. But if you look at like if you just look at <laughs> the the album and you look at all the names of the songs let's see in order mm, let's see narcissist prayer emotional terrorist lonely vigil house of ideas which is a great song and the this song. one this one i almost didn't want to play this when i first was listening but the i feel nothing when you cry that is a a devastating statement to make yeah and a devastating statement to hear and then unbidden guest i return as chained and bound to you 
The Promise, Panic Stricken I Flee, and Siege Perilous. These are all just, they're so emotional. So emotional. But I return as bound and chained to you. The drums on that. Well, the drums not only on that, but throughout the album. Yeah. The, oh, this 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 album is all drums and all screams. That's really what this album is, with some cool other stuff. But it's a screaming and drumming album. Yes. If you were to point out the two things that stick out the most, it would be the 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 just heart wrenching screams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, the larynx lacerating screams. Yeah. <laughs> and just the the percussion. The percussion is so masterful. You know, it's like it's got some grind core, some hardcore in there. Yeah. You know, it's like they're, they're throwing everything at you. And like if you're listening to this in your car and you have like a decent system in your car, it's overwhelming because it feels like you're just being attacked. It does. And, you know, back <laughs> to House of Pro- um, House of Ideas, which I know you you really like. And I, I love that one. The drumming on that. Well, everything about that song is amazing. But the drumming on that, I was listening to on the way back from that little school of rock thing recently. And I just put it on repeat because I can't get through this album without repeating that song. I can't do it. Oh, no. It's from the minute you hear that whip crack at the very (laughs) beginning to when the the long fade out. Yes. You got got to it again. Yeah, but, I just have, but, I, I've gone through, I've probably listened to this song 10 times in a row before. Yeah, I've definitely done that. But that song in particular with the drumming, you know, that first of all, that song just starts out at, at a frantic running, yelling pace. It just, yes. it doesn't give you any time to think about anything. And then as the song continues, it gets to this, this slow, not really slow, but just everything sort of shrinks down and you have this long droning point where you're waiting. And I've done this again and again, where I've backed it up to the start of that, where, the, where everything quiets down. And then I'm trying to track with, and I'm trying to anticipate when that first drum hit is going to come in. And I can't get it. They throw it me. Okay, good. Because they throw me off every time, which is extremely exciting as a listener and a musician. Yeah. Well, and, and it's it's so interesting. Like we think of this as really like a drum and vocals album, you know, yeah. like those are kind of the 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 high marks, let's say, yeah, uh, or the the things that maybe stand out the most as being distinct, perhaps from other Thou albums, even. Um, but House of Ideas, which I think is the best song on the album, and maybe my favorite Thou song. Uh, that's just that's, period. That's not out, a bad out of all their their work. Mm-hmm. Um, is when the drums just disappear. Yeah, when it just all of a sudden you just, it's like you're catching your breath, but then you're suspended. Yeah, you're you're somehow it's like everything falls away and it's just the guitars, and and you somehow feel worse. Yeah, you would think there'd be a little bit of relief there, but no, not quite. <laughs> And, and and it's just the it's like the anticipation because you know it's going to come back in, but how is it going to come back in? When is it going to come back in? Mm-hmm. Like the first time I heard it, I was like, "What the fuck is this?" You almost kind of think the song's fading out right there. Yeah, you think, oh, okay, maybe that's like a maybe this is like a really short song. Okay, cool. Um, and then it just expands and it expands mm-hmm. and it expands and it expands, and then the drums come in. And the full band comes in and then that just insane, simple, but effective kind of lead that plays over everything. Yeah, that guitar. So when they when the guitar comes in there, it's like this 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 sort of flying airplane washing kind of sound. Yeah. And they mm. and they they fool me every time because they do this first uh the the little melody that they do in that very first part where they're introducing the guitar solo there i expect it to repeat and it doesn't and yeah yeah, and so i'm waiting for it so they they 
trip me up a lot, which is something I really enjoy, you know, as a, as a musician. I like it when I can be fooled by what's coming next without it being something that doesn't make sense. It all works. It all flows. But that whole yeah. section is just after such heaviness at the beginning and that whole section, it's still dark, but it's beautiful. Yeah, it's it's so simple. It uh, that, And that's what it really is. It's like, you know, it's the simplicity of to go back to the cover of someone holding a lily. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. um, it it's it's just a flower. It's just a plant. But there's so much meaning behind it. Yes. You know? Yeah. Um, I I would say the more I listen to this album, that one has definitely become my favorite track. And I like, yeah, just keep it on repeat on experience it again and again. And definitely I'm still trying to figure out as I listen to it, what am I missing that I can't know that it's coming next? You know? Yeah. It's like, this isn't sun. This isn't free rhythm. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. Like I, I know that they're doing something. I just can't seem to, to catch hold of it. Yes. And, and I love that. that it, it makes me like sick. Yeah. It's very mogwai. Mm. Yeah. Very Mogwai, especially Mogwai's song. Um, I think it's it's on the album as the love continues. Uh, but that that particular this song that we're talking about, House of Ideas, has a very Mogwai feel in general. The mm-hmm. second half of the song, and that's something Mogwai is good at, is not. You know, everything they do, it makes sense. But as you're listening to it, they do the unexpected all the time. Exactly. And and this album is just full of unexpected. You yeah. Know? Like, House of Ideas stands out for me the most just because, I, I mean, I, I think it's one, the most distinctive song on the album. Mm-hmm. And two, it's just, I, I'm obsessed with it and have been since May 31st. <laughs> um, <laughs> but... It doesn't get old. What I think it doesn't get old. It doesn't get old at all. But what I think is really interesting is how this album functions as an album. Like I I have I have a lot of trouble pulling out specific songs except for House of Ideas. Not in that the songs aren't distinct from each other and not in the way that they don't each have their own identity and meaning. Uh, both I'm sure to thou and to the listener, you know, like I, I have a meaning behind each of these songs that I listen right. to, but I feel like they created a sonic experience that you just have to sit there or walk around or something like that and listen to it start to finish mm-hmm. like the entire thing from beginning to end. It does tie. And again, it's just, it's very themed it's concept album and it's it's purposeful the beat from beginning to end which really you know makes me think as a musician about okay and the intentionality behind how you you know so many people stopped thinking about how you arrange an album a long time ago yeah because everything became singles after apple like itunes yes but I still really, pre- you know, we were just talking about Moody Blues and um, Days of Future Past, which is obviously written from start to finish extremely intentionally because it's going through a whole day. But I, mm-hmm. I love concept albums for that reason, because I like to sit and listen to an entire album like I like to sit and watch a movie. Exactly. You know? Digest it. Mm-hmm. Yeah with the way that it was meant to be put together and the the way that it was meant to be consumed. Yeah. It's like, it's like going to, to a fancy dinner somewhere, you know, and you have a bunch of courses and they're all meant to go together and they're all meant to be consumed in the right order with the right pacing with the right notes of flavor and things like that, with the right pairings and things like that. Like this album feels like I, I I don't know that I noticed like a a narrative or anything like that, but I still would agree that this is a concept album of sorts because it's so unified. It's like a unified front 
of just dejection followed by hope, you mm-hmm. know, anger followed by peace. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I don't know if they intended it that way, but that's how I'm hearing it. And that's, I think, why I feel it it has its own unintentional theme of, I, I don't even know how to wrap it up into one word, but it's sort of this where so many of us have found ourselves in this this time and space that we exist with everything that we were, we were so frightened. We were so, uh, we were Rejected. bereft. We were, and we were bereft of many things. And I'm going to mm. get very emotional here, but I remember so acutely during the, uh, you know, when we were all isolating and we were all staying home and we were not going to see people. And I remember lying in bed one night, unable to sleep and just silently weeping because all I could think is of was the amount of time I was missing with my grandmother mm-hmm. and how, and how that time I was never going to get that back. And I feared, I don't, I'm not a person who is uh, plagued by a lot of fear. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. I, I just don't have that really built into me. I'm a pretty, you know, I have deal with anxiety and all that, but I just don't really live in fear. But I remember being so terrified that I might lose her during that time period or slightly mm-hmm. after. And just what that would mean to me for the rest of my life, all that loss of time, what I was, yeah. you know, what I we all lost jobs and some of us lost houses and some of us lost marriages and we lost a lot of things. But for me, all I could think of was that time that was being taken away with someone that is so precious to me. And thankfully I can stand here and say, she's, she's doing great. And I get to see her and talk to her a lot, but that was such a heavy, um, fear of mine at the time that it it would prevent me from sleeping you know and mm. so we were all we were all losing things and we were all frustrated and scared and now coming out of it the world's not recovered i'm not totally recovered you we're know the same we're, we're just different now yeah <clears throat> and so musically i think so uh, so many bands that i talk to it's like they were doing one thing prior to this and it it forced change and it forced a redirection for so many people. And that's the thing about musicians and artists is we will try to find some something to do with it, some place to put all of those feelings. So a, a band like this and so many others that are heavy and dark, they're they're going to put all of that in there, you know, uh, exactly. My dad always talks about how Vietnam is why we have metal music in the first place. He I mean, al- it's not a small factor. Right. Yeah. He always talks about how he remembers that shift from the happy, flowery, hippie songs that people were drawn to and were making to heavy, darker rock, to the progression of, you know, so, some angry protest music to metal. And he said, just like what we've experienced, he remembers people were angry, frustrated, dejected. They felt let down. They felt confused. You know, it was our first televised war, really. Yeah. You know, so out of those eras, when we are recovering collectively from so much grief and fear and anger, what do we do with it? And for musicians, you do stuff like this. Yeah, you make a great fucking album if you yeah. can. <laughs> With titles like Narcissist Prayer. And <laughs> yeah, Emotional Terrorist, and I Feel Nothing When You Cry. Yeah. Um, oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that really sums it up is is just this is a an album of the moment and for the moment. But I think it's going to last because the quality of the writing and mm-hmm. the execution And the sound is top to bottom. I mean, I, 
I'd like to keep an open mind about about a calendar year. We still have a couple months left. Right. But my album of the year was decided when this came out. I was just like, okay, this this is this is the achievement of the year, you know, because <laughs> like, for like, me, this album has defined 2024. Yeah, yeah, it's so relatable. It's 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 that kind of painfully relatable that brings some catharsis once you've listened to it, especially if you read the fucking lyrics. Yeah, they're they're dark and painful and me- and kind of mean. They are kind of mean. <laughs> whether whether it's mean to someone else or mean to yourself, you right. know, like right. me- meanness is not just outwardly directed. Yes. Um. And and there's there's a, it's not hatefulness because there's a lot of love in this album. I feel right. like yes. If there was hatefulness, I don't know that I could survive this album as well. Exactly. Exactly. There's, there's so much love for the world and love for hope that they're just saying, look at the rod and look at where we are, but also look up and see that the sun still fucking rises. Mm -hmm. And we remain. We remain, you know, and luckily we remain with that. Yeah. (laughs) And I'm a little bit, I'm a lot of bit sad. They're playing near me. They have two shows coming up that are within my range, but I have shows each night. I'm playing in my bands each night and I can't. Oh, that's how it goes, isn't it? Oh my gosh. I'm like, how did this happen? But that, yeah, they're touring like mad right now. Yeah, I I've seen them once and it it's it's a life changing experience. I like bet. it changed my entire view of of what live music can be. So, so, what when they were when you watched them, what was their setup like? If you can remember, uh, so it was pretty straightforward. I mean, when I saw them, they had three guitarists. Um, so it was it was not a small stage, but it was still crowded. You know, mm-hmm. when you have, let's see, that'd be six people up there. Yeah. Six stacks. Yeah. Like that, that takes up some space. Um, but Brian, the vocalist, I mean, he just, he takes the front of the stage sometimes. And then sometimes he just turns his back and just stares at the drummer and just That's bends over. And, yeah. I mean, and it's, it, it's an immersive experience and it was in, during the middle of an extreme heat wave and like the air conditioning couldn't handle how many people were in there. Uh, and so we were just pouring sweat and like having, you know, like we felt like we were dying. Yeah. But if you're going to die, die for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> die pledge, to see a thou show. Pledge your fealty to thou. <laughs> yes. You yes. Don't, plant your flag. <laughs> you don't happen to remember what uh what guitars like if anyone was playing here's my theory everyone in doom plays a dunnable no no dunnables Dunnables. dunnables. okay (laughs) not at all um if i remember right it was like gibson and greco oh okay okay yeah i i I remember one gibson especially and then i think i think there were two gibsons and one greco nice can't go wrong with Gibson on that with the humbuckers in them. Oh yeah. You know, like they I mean, but they were all playing Les Paul shaped bodies. Oh, okay. Very nice. Just the sustain and the ability to feedback and everything. Mm-hmm. So it was it was loud and it was powerful. It was brilliant. Oh man. Yeah, I am it's it's not cool that I'm gonna miss them, but I'll just keep my eye out for the next round. Yeah, let, let, we'll just keep our fingers crossed that Dial's not going anywhere because yes. I, I think there are bands that I love and there are bands that I need, and I think that I need Dial, and I think a lot of people need Dial. You know? Yeah, this like, is not a, this is not an album that I'm going to get over anytime quick. No, no. Like I've been listening to this album for for almost five months now, and and it's still in constant rotation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just just today, 
while doing chores, I had it on again and again, and I absolutely put uh, put a couple of them on repeat. And, you know, I just I it's not as productive when I'm trying to get a task done because I end up just stopping and standing still for certain things. You know, exactly. Like, exactly. I just need to put a Muppet soundtrack on instead. But I <laughs> but yeah, I just I have to hear. And then, you know, if if something's on a vinyl record, I'm picking it up and putting it back. But in this case, I'm scrolling back on the on the screen mm-hmm. um, again and again, because I just I want to hear that same sound. And like you said, it's immersive. I just want to climb into it. Yeah. No, I mean, start to finish, it, it it makes you feel like you're someplace where you're you're not. Yeah. Um, it puts you in it puts you in a psychological place, but it also almost puts you in like a a different physical location. It's very much. It's heavier than them, but it's very much the same feeling I get with Russian circles. Yeah. 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 Where where it transports you. Yeah, it just kind of wraps around, and yeah, it envelops yeah. you. It really does. And it it takes so much of my attention, which is great. You know, I have a very ADHD busy brain and for something to to make me stop in my tracks. And then I'm for a short while not worrying or thinking. It's not even registering all the other things that are usually so loud. They just they shut up for that moment. And I I think that's why I gravitate towards music like this, that it's you're not, it's not just what you're hearing. It is what you're feeling emotionally, but it's also physically the static of it. Very much so. I mean, it, it defies like a one to 10 rating, you know, you can't rate it on a one to 10 scale. You need the richer scale for it. Yes. Yes. It could be 11. 11 is louder. It's it's definitely an 11 at very least, (laughs) but you know, it's just, it's, thunderous and it's there and you are in the moment when you listen to it yeah very much it's not easy listening no but but it's necessary listening yeah necessary yeah definitely well yeah i'm i'm into it and i'm looking forward to see seeing what else they do and i don't know maybe i need to take a a few hour drive to their next show (laughs) You might have to. It would be worth it. It would actually be like an eight or nine hour drive. I don't know if I can quite justify that, but who knows? Maybe I'm just going to take off in the middle of the night. Might be time. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Very fun. Any other little special things to talk about when it comes to this amazing album? Um, Get it on vinyl because that's when it sounds the best. You have it on vinyl? I do. Oh my cuss. Yeah. I'm going to have to do that. <laughs> yeah. That'll be a really good it's, one. It's very have. worth it. You know, support, support bands that do, that make art, you know, mm-hmm. that, and, and I think this band is doing something valuable, not just musically, but socially, you know, yeah. and I'm, they're I'm... unique and they're trailblazers and they're, they they should be considered not just a great band, but an important band. Yeah, they are artists. The on their on the picture I've seen of the the um vinyl record insert, it's maybe I'm wrong, but it has the titles of the song and then like a little quote and then the lyrics. Yeah. And the quote I saw for emotional terror terrorists is It's so easy to laugh. It's so easy to hate. It takes strength to be gentle and kind. And that, if that's not a perfect, you know, tattoo, I don't know what else is. (laughs) It's a summation of, of, of what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's so, it's what we try to teach children all the time. There are things that are so easy to do, but the toughest thing is to just, Stay kind. Yeah, I mean, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young said, teach your children. But I think what they meant was teach your t- children to listen to that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that'll be a t-shirt right there. I've taught my children to listen to thou. 